Hey everybody, it's Kyle with Roberto Security, and today we're continuing on the Hack the Box starting point series with the Ignition Box. Let's get going. All right, so I already got a box up and running. I'm gonna grab our IP here, hop right into Cali, and I'm gonna do a sudo nmap, put in our IP address, do a dash SV to try to get our version number, and then dash SC to do a standard script search. I'm gonna let that run, and I'll get back to you in a second. Okay, so it looks like it was only able to find port 80, which is just your standard HTTP page. So let's open up Firefox, let's launch this page and see what we can find. So it looks like I tried to load ignition.hackthebox, um, but it wasn't actually able to follow it. It says, sorry, the page you were looking for does not exist. Um, taking a look at the end map, we can see that it was not able to follow the redirect to HTTP ignition.hackthebox, but it did recognize the version of NGINX 1.14.2 for the version number of the page. So we can try to take a guess here as to a couple things that may be wrong. The first being that we never actually entered the correct name. So maybe we mistyped what could have been the host name. The second could be that the IP address is hosting multiple host names using virtual hosting. We can check that if we just copy this here and try to go back into Firefox. Let's try to load this page to make sure we don't have our spelling incorrect and it's still unable to actually load the page. In order to solve this, we can actually edit our local host files, similar to what we've done in previous boxes. If we can confirm this if we just type in curl-v so we get verbose mode and then put in our IP address. Let me go grab that one more time. Hop back into Kali, paste that in, and we can see right here that it was able to find that page and it does give us that specific server. We can run echo put in quotations, our IP address, and then what it resolved to being ignition.hackthebox. Close that off. We're gonna pipe this and do a sudo key, so we write to a file, dash A to append it, and it's going to go into our Etsy slash hosts. Now you can see that that copied over. And we type in tail slash Etsy slash hosts, we can see right here at the bottom that it did actually resolve our IP address to being ignition.hackthebox. So now if we go back into Firefox and we put in our IP address, it should go to our web page. And we can see that it has loaded our ignition.hackthebox and it is a Luma page. Taking a look around here, there's nothing particularly interesting. There's a contact us page we may be able to exploit down the line. Uh, we just have a simple search bar. Uh, we can subscribe to things, but it doesn't look like uh, anything that could prove too useful us right away. So while we're looking around this page, why don't we go ahead and run GoBuster to see if we can find any directories that might be available. So I'm gonna type GoBuster, and we're gonna do a directory search, dash U, put in our IP address, dash W, we're gonna specify our word list being user share word list, derbuster, slash directory 2.3 small and we'll let this run and let's see what it can find for us so what we get back is actually an error code this is probably because it's not able to resolve the url by the ip address so i'm going to type in the full address being http colon slash slash ignition dot hack the box all right let's let that run and see if it's able to find anything for us All right, so I'm gonna let this continue running, but I did notice we do have a couple pages that we can explore here. And one in particular that looks interesting is the slash admin. So if we go back to our page, we have this ad, and we're gonna do admin here at the end. And let's see what it brings up here. And we get a login page to something called Magento. All right, since we have a login page and we know it's Magento, why don't we just take a quick search here and see what the Magento default password is. The default username for Magento router is admin. Okay, so we know that we're gonna to try to log in as the admin user and the default password is 123123. So let's go back in, let's try to do admin. Let's do 123123 and sign in. 
Uh, okay, invalid form key. Let's refresh the page. Okay, let's enter admin and then one, two, three, one, two, three. Press enter on that. The account sign in was incorrect or the account is disabled temporarily. Okay, so it looks like that we couldn't actually log in with the default password, but let's see what the default password policy is. Maybe that can give us a hint as to the kind of things we need to do. And it says, note that Magento has specific requirements for admin passwords. It means that such passwords must be at least seven characters long and include both letters and numbers. Now, this is something that we might actually be able to create with a common password list and then have these specific requirements written directly in. So I'm gonna open up another terminal here. Now I'm gonna look for a specific password list to use. So I'm gonna look at user, share, word lists. I'm gonna use sec lists and let's see, we got passwords. And after that, we can do something like the 2020 200 most used passwords might be a good thing to look for. Let's cap that out. Okay, we have a whole bunch of common passwords. Uh, this looks good, but I think we can curtail this even more to be something that is more in line that works with the default admin password policy. What I can do, I'm gonna press up one more time. So we're gonna bring up this word list. Now what I'm gonna do is break this down and create a new word list that goes in line with what this new password policy is going to be. And what I'm gonna do is use grep. What grep is, is a utility that looks for plain text and allows us to use different kind of expressions to further break it down. So I'm gonna use grep dash X, and now I'm gonna use something called regex, which allows us to use even more of an expression to further define this. I'm gonna start with apostrophe to start our regex expression. I'm gonna use a period slash to indicate that we're starting the expression. Now I'm gonna put in a bracket seven because we know that we need to have seven characters minimum. And I'm gonna max it out at something like 15. And then we can close that bracket, finish it off with a backslash, and then close off the bracket and then have a, another quotation to end it. And now we're gonna have pipe it one more time and we're gonna do egrep. And what egrep is, is just extended grep, which allows us to use more expressions to further define our logic. So I'm gonna start off this egrep statement with a quotation mark and we're gonna include everything within this parentheses. And I'm gonna start a bracket because now we need to include the logic that is we have every number touch every letter and the other way around where every letter touches every number. Because remember within our password policy, we have to include both a number and letter. So I'm gonna say uh, zero to nine and we're gonna include letters A to Z. Super simple, I'm gonna pipe it, and we now we just need to have it go the other way around. So letters A to Z, close the bracket, and open up another bracket, and we're gonna do zero to nine. Close that off, close off the parentheses to further complete our statement, and the quotation is gonna further end that. Now we're going to pipe or send that out to a different file, and we're just gonna call this passlist.txt. Press enter on that, and now if we cat out our passlist, we can see that it is further defined and it's much shorter, but it includes everything that has both letters and numbers. And it doesn't matter if it's capital or not. So now that we've included a more refined password list, why don't we go ahead and capture that page with something like Burp Suite. I'm gonna type in Burp Suite. Have Burp Suite open up for us. We're just gonna open up a temporary project. And I'm gonna to go to proxy. I'm gonna open up a browser. And so now we have Chromium and I'm gonna go back to Firefox. I'm gonna take that login page. I'm gonna send that over and open it in Chromium. So now we're gonna have a history of it within Burp. And all I need to do is actually capture this login page. So I'm gonna go back into Burp. Let's turn in our interceptor and I'm gonna type in, uh, it doesn't really matter because we're just trying to capture anything. So I'm just gonna type some random letters and numbers. And we can see that we have a form key with the login credential. This is going to kind of be like what a cookie is to verify that we have a current session active. And then we have an admin and our password. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is send this over to Intruder. Let's pull this up in Intruder. We're just gonna have a basic sniper attack because we know that we're gonna use the admin username. Let's clear out every kind of parameter that we're gonna define. Let's highlight this password parameter. So I'm gonna highlight it and press this add to mark as a payload. 
Now let's go over to payloads and let's load our regimented password list that we created. So I'm gonna go home and if I look right here, we have passlist.txt. This is all of our password lists. And I'm just going to press start attack. If you are on the community edition, you're going to get a warning saying it's going to limit the amount of threads and how fast it's going to attack, meaning that we're going to be throttled on our speed, which is fine. If you're on the pro edition, you won't ever see this. I'm going to press OK and I'm going to let this run real quick and let's see what it can come up with. OK, didn't take very long. We went all the way to request number 11 and we have QWERTY 123. You can see that we have a different status being 302 and the length is completely different. So if we click on another one of these responses, we can see if we scroll down in the response, a bunch of gibberish. We're saying message error error. But this is a statement that I was looking for was the message error. The account sign in was incorrect, but this was on the wrong password. Now, if we click on the correct one and we see that this page was found and we scroll down, we can see that there's nothing below. And this is because when we have a 302 page, it means that it's being redirected to a different page that we could then follow. Now that we know what the password is, QWERTY123, I'm going to go back into proxy. I'm going to turn this intercept off. It's going to recognize that we have an incorrect login. Uh, this is saying our form key is wrong, which is fine. Let's go back into Firefox. I'm going to refresh this page. Just have it resend just so we have a new form key. We already know what the password is. So at this point, just having a good form key is all we really need. I'm going to type in admin and QWERTY, R-T-Y, one, two, three. Sign in. And here's our login page. And right here at the advanced reporting, we can see congrats, your flag with our flag number. Let's go back in and answer these hack the box questions. What service version is found to be running on port 80? Well, let's go back in and review our in-map scan. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that go buster since we have already found our answer. And we have on port 80, NGINX 1.14.2. What is the three digit HTTP status code return when you visit HTTP colon slash slash and our machine IP? Let's go back in and look at our terminal and we can see when we tried to visit it, we got a 302 found. What is the virtual host name the web page expects to be accessed by? That was ignition.hackthebox. What is the full path to the file on a Linux computer that holds a local list of domain name to IP address pairs? That is slash Etsy slash hosts. Use a tool to brute force directories on the web server. What is the full URL to the Magento login page? That was HTTP colon slash slash ignition dot hack the box slash admin. Look up the password requirements for Magento and also try searching for the most common passwords of 2023. Which password provides access to the admin account? That was QWERTY123 for our final password. And then we need to grab our flag. Let's go into Firefox where we loaded the web page. Let's grab that flag. Oops. And submit our root flag. And we've completed the ignition box. Congratulations on completing the ignition box. This is the first time we use a combination of OSINT along with our technical skills. Learning to use Google as a powerful engine in order to further exploit possible vulnerabilities is gonna be very important for us in the future. Utilizing what is openly available and then honing our tools to specifically target those areas is going to work tremendous for us going forward. Thanks again. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. See you next time.